Welcome to 5Spice, a program for simulating analog circuits. In this video I'll go through working with the schematic. I've already loaded a demo schematic, so let's get started. The first thing to look at is setting the page size of the schematic. To do that you come up to the project menu here and take a look at the schematic settings for the visible page. Right now it's the small size, which is what the demo program runs but registered users can set it to larger sizes up to C size so we'll set it to A size here. Next let's take a look at the action of the right mouse button in working with the schematic. It basically does two things. If you're in the middle of doing something, so let's say we come over here to place a part and we grab a resistor and we're ready to place a resistor. If I click the right mouse button that cancels that action. The other thing that we that it does is to bring up pop-up menus. So if I right click on the schematic I get the schematic pop-up menu. If I right click on a part I get a component or a part pop-up menu. And if I right click on the wire I get the wire pop-up menu. So keep in mind that 5Spice uses pop-up menus almost everywhere. So now let's go back to drawing and we'll go back to that capacitor. So the part symbols are on these fly-out menus. And you roll your mouse along till you get the one you want. And let's this time pick out a capacitor. So with a left click we place it on the schematic and then the right click cancels it. And then for wiring, uh, lines are just for looking at. Wires connect things electrically, so we select a wire and you can see the cursor changes to a pencil for drawing. But there's really a quicker way to do wiring. On your keyboard, press and hold the control key. And the cursor again changes to the pencil. Click on the part and click for the corner and you're done. So let's go back now and this time let's grab whoops, sorry, a resistor. Now before we place the part we may want to position it in a different position so we can rotate the part by pressing the R key on the keyboard. If we select say an op amp symbol we not only can rotate it by, with the R key but we can mirror it with the M key. So M gives you a horizontal mirroring there. And then of course you can place it and you can then rotate it and place it and all of that. So I'm going to highlight them and hit the delete key to get rid of them. So next let's take a look at editing the values of parts. To edit anything in 5Spice you double click it. So instead of 100 nanofarads, let's put in 100 picofarads. And the same for resistors. Life gets a little more interesting with this linear gain block. You can see there's a variety of parameters there which you can enter. Let's go back and look at wires and lines again, which is the cursor up here. And suppose, let's take a look at what a a line would be. The lines are basically just appearance items. So if you wanted to highlight the part we added here, you could enclose it in a dotted line. Um, and then you could move it out here to be centered. You could also, we could also add another resistor and take a look. Notice now I'm going to hold the control key down for drawing the wire and notice that when I complete the wire a junction appears. These round spots are junctions. A junction is required to connect wires and pins that meet in a T or four-way intersection. So we could also come back up here and if the program for some reason doesn't add a junction you can select junction and place a junction there. Cancel that, hold the control key down and now again complete your wiring. The final piece to look at here 
is suppose we had a wire that doesn't go anywhere. Now 5Spice doesn't allow this because it's awfully easy to have a part that isn't actually connected. You submit the netlist to Spice and it simulates it anyway. But of course the answers are wrong. So in 5Spice we have this NC stands for no connect. We have a no connect symbol. So basically in order to get this to work we're going to have to put no connect symbol on it. But just to start off I'm going to cancel that and let me uh, show you what happens if I try and run a simulation without the no connect. So here we get the error message and we have an error indicated right there. So coming back here we select the no co connect and we put it right in the middle there and then pow. So the simulation ran. But today we're looking at the schematic. Now let's We've already covered a few things and a bunch of options, and we're going to cover a little more. And what's, uh, what happens if you start forgetting all of this stuff? Well, there's the hand. And if you put the cursor over this symbol, there's the instructions for dragging parts, which will show, block move, which will show. We already showed the rotate and flip, and zooming the page in and out, making it bigger and smaller. So whenever you need to remember, you just go back here. Okay, so let's take a look at a dragging of a part now. We showed that earlier. You can drag this, you can drag that, you can drag this. The wires try and follow when you drag a part, um, but the dragging is somewhat limited, as you'll discover. So you see that that happens because this wire was two separate wires, so we have to move them both. So that's basically dragging. You click on it, you hold the, the mouse key down, the mouse button down, and then you release. So we click, we hold down, and we release. Standard schematic drawing type practice. So what if we wanted to move, though, this whole block of parts? So we're talking about a uh, what could be called a block move or a group move. Well, if you click on an open space in the schematic and you hold the left button, mouse button down, and you put a selection box around here, just like you would do in any drawing program. And now within the selection box, you uh, left click, and now it's attached to the mouse cursor. And again, another mouse click, and there it is. Um, and to demonstrate a point we made earlier, so here we are ready to move it, and let's say I decide I don't want to do this. Well, I click with the right mouse button, and it cancels. So the next thing would be, well, actually, notice that you select things by just clicking on them with the left button, and I'm hitting the delete key now. So if I select things and hit the delete key, you can probably hear it clicking away there. That's a way to get rid of stuff. So what happens if we are dragging this along and we hit the edge of the schematic? You can see that the whole schematic jumped. It moved. So that happens automatically. But what that also means is if I just left click here in the open area of the schematic, and drag the selection box to the edge, I can make the schematic oops, move up and down. So that's panning the schematic. Now obviously you can use the scroll bars as usual, but it's sometimes a lot more convenient to do the panning. The final thing we're going to talk about is zooming the schematic in and out. So let's just go back here. There's actually three different ways to do it. Um, one way is the pop-up menu with the right mouse click here. So we can zoom in and we can zoom out. But most of the time you probably want to use a quicker way. And if you look at your keyboard, you have page up and page down keys. So here's page up and here's page down and another page down. So that's zooming. And there's a third method that uses the mouse scroll wheel. And that's what I wanted to show today. One final note, 
We didn't cover everything in drawings, so to see all the details, go to Help, Drawing How-To, and there it is. Thanks for watching.